Hello and welcome to another Wheels Boy quick review. This time we're going to be talking about a car that I've really wanted to talk about for a while on our channel. This, the Baojun E300. This car costs about twice as much as a mini EV, which we previously covered on the channel. And I wanted to see, do you get twice as much car? Let's start with what would arguably be the highlight of the E300, and that would be the exterior styling, particularly this front end design. When I saw this thing, I instantly fell in love with it, especially with the lights lit like this. It looks like nothing more than a little robot car. Uh, it also reminds me a lot of those concept cars that companies like Toyota and Honda will debut at the Tokyo Auto Salon and then never put into production. Well, Baojun looked at those and said, we can do that. Much like the Mini EV that we tested previously, this thing is rocking some massive and wonderful 12-inch rims here on the side. The other thing that's most noticeable is the fact that the door takes up more or less the entire length of the vehicle. <laughs> other than that, the side also genuinely reminds me of those uh, Toyota style concept cars that you see at the auto salons with its big bubble-like top here in the greenhouse. Back here on the rear end, we have the same kind of distinctive robot-esque styling with these very cool rear tail lights and these very expressive lower lights here. If we open up the rear, I just need to, takes a special touch. No, that, oh, no, there it goes, there it goes. All right, now you can see that the seat back for this one rear seat is literally up against the rear bulkhead here. If you pull the strap, you can drop it down. Oh, hold on. Drop it all the way down flat. And then in addition to the cargo area over here, you also have some space on top. Let's pop open the door here, see if we can't get into the back seat absolutely have to move this seat about as far forward as possible. Now that I'm in here, let's see, can I... Well, if the passenger here is willing to remove their knees for your convenience, you will have pretty good leg room. But if they're an actual human being, yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty tight. Here in the interior, we have a lot more good things to say. This thing has way more features than the Wooly Mini EV that we drove, uh, including a lot of actual physical buttons here. Uh, the screen on the center, you got things like uh, Bluetooth, um, as well as some very nice buttons here on the steering wheel, kind of touch buttons, and driving modes, which we'll get to in just a second. The interior quality is slightly above that of the Mini EV. I compared the interior plastics of the Mini EV to somewhere between a compact car and a public bathroom. This is a little bit closer to a compact, compact car. The seats are very similar. I should mention that uh, Baojun is a sub-brand of Wuling, but they do not use the same platform as the Mini EV. This is an all-new MEV fully electric platform. The spec to the interior here, the seats are a little bit more supportive than the Mini EV, and the materials are, I would say, a little bit softer. This is a uh, test car for a dealership or a um, test drive car, so there's a little bit of stains here. It's gotten some good use. Um, but overall, I would say the interior has a lot of character, especially places like the touches of color here on the door. And overall, it gives me a uh, slightly more upscale impression compared to the Mini EV. If I pull this little lever, we will open up the world's most adorable little front cover here. Obviously, this isn't an engine cover. There's no engine. This is a pure electric vehicle. Uh, you can see the um, brake, braking oil, the braking system, and then as well as the 
uh, windshield wiper fluid. There is, however, no electric motor here because the electric motor is on the rear. That's right. This is a rear wheel drive, rear mounted, baby. Let's open right here. You will see the charging port. This is, a, of course, a fully electric vehicle. This lower spec model only has the slow charging port. It does not have a quick charging port. That's an extra 2,000 RMB or about 300 plus dollars if you want that. Uh, if you have the quick charging, it's about an hour to fully charge the 31 kilowatt hour battery. Slow charge is about five hours. On a full charge, the NEDC range is 305 kilometers, which is pretty impressive. As we prepare to get on the road here with the Baldrian E300, let's talk a little bit more about its power system. Again, full electric, rear-mounted, single electric motor, producing about 55 horsepower, but 111 pound-feet of torque, which is more than enough for a car that only weighs about 950 kilograms. Very impressive. Let's hit the gas and see how it feels. Acceleration is gentle. That was accelerating from about 40 kilometers an hour. Um, I think from a dead stop, it feels quick enough uh, for most urban scenarios, though, like the Mini EV, I, I don't know that I would want to drive it much on the highway. One of the things that I noticed in getting in this car is there is different driving modes. We were just in sport. If I hit the gas in eco mode, the difference doesn't feel that big. Standard mode, still about the same. What I would like to know is, is there any difference in the driving? Ah. Yeah, not a lot of difference. There's not any difference. It seems like it probably only changes the throttle response just a little bit. It doesn't affect the steering feel, for example. It's still the same uh, weight in the steering. Speaking of the steering, it's pretty numb. It has a, but it is also, by addition to the fact that this is such a tiny car, it is also very flickable. I think that it's bigger than the Mini EV, uh, but still so small as to be kind of fun to drive and just find little gaps in traffic to squirt into. One of the things that works against you when you're trying to do that, however, is the fact that the dashboard on this car is so incredibly deep. It feels as though it makes up, you know, 30% of the length of the vehicle in the interior. I'm really not sure what's up there, considering the fact that the uh, electric motor is in the back and the battery is below you. The result of that is that you feel surprisingly far away from the corners of the car, which are actually kind of hard to see. Uh, I was just driving a larger SUV before I got into this, but it feels like that SUV's actual uh, view outside of the car, including the corners, was a little bit better than this one. In terms of ride quality, we're dealing with a pretty basic suspension. It's, I believe it is very similar to the one in the, in the Mini EV. So I don't expect very much. Let's, I'm looking for potholes to hit. Fine enough, fine enough. Uh, interior NVH is pretty loud, as you would expect, uh, but it offers a little bit more refinement than that of the Mini EV, I would say. Let's take some corners here. Again, I'm not, I'm not overly impressed with the steering feel, but just by the fact that this car is so small, let's sport mode, let's get a little pass in. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's not that fast. <laughs> it's not that fast at all. But again, at 55 horsepower and 950-ish kilos, it's plenty to live with. If you needed to uh, get around somebody in traffic, you, you could probably do it with a little bit of planning. It's not dangerously slow by any means. Let's take this corner at speed. Whoa, <laughs> pretty good. Feels pretty good. It doesn't, it feels, feels safe. It feels relatively planted. It's not a uh, very long wheelbase, obviously. Any more power and I could probably rotate this thing on a dime. Uh, unlike the Mini EV, it doesn't have a handbrake, which is probably good for my insurance rates because I would probably flip it if I tried that. Um, but what else? I did not realize when I got in this car that it had these fantastic pink seatbelts. I actually think this is kind of awesome. Colored seatbelts are uh, always a really nice visual touch. Um, everything else, I also found the 
shifter here to be very interesting. The Mini EV had a shifting kind of knob down here between the seats. This one has a cool stubby little shifter that pokes out and is just, you know, down for drive, up for reverse and neutral, and then hit the end here for park. Uh, very intuitive to use. All of the buttons are within easy reach, and you also, I've noticed, have a little storage cubby down here and some uh, USB ports, one for charging and one for connecting to the car. And remember, this is a car with uh, Bluetooth equipped. The other thing, and this is perhaps the most important, this thing has a has what it claims to be ADAS, which I believe is a, a sister, automatic driving assistance system or whatever, which is basically some form of self-driving. Um, I'm assuming that it really turns out to be something closer to uh, ACC or adaptive cruise control. Uh, I don't know that it actually has a lane keep assist. We are on some small roads, so it's difficult to activate it really, but, oh, that was perfect. That was a great illustration of why this car is so fun to drive is that it's so short, I was able to make a very quick and easy U-turn back here in this corner. Let's get back to this main road and see if we can turn on the assisted driving system. It's telling me, it's telling me that it currently isn't able to do that. Maybe I turn it on. Looks like it's not gonna let me, unfortunately, turn on the uh, assisted driving. I'll, I'll talk to the people at the dealership and see if I can find out why that is, but my guess is that it's either not big enough of a road, uh, or it may be that this car actually isn't equipped with that system, though I wouldn't expect them to include the button if that was the case. Uh, either way, the mere fact that it exists in any form is kind of phenomenal in a car that costs, in this case, this particular car, less than $13,000 dollars very very impressive levels of uh of equipment for sure all right thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching our review our quick review of the baljun e300 my biggest takeaways from this car i absolutely love the way it looks i personally would love to drive a little robot around town every day i also think at twice the price of the mini ev the starting price on this is about $10,000 and a top of the line trim will get to about $13,000. But if you've got the money, I think it's worth stretching to the E300 over a mini EV. That's all for today. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you are enjoying our video uh, and stay tuned for more exciting content from the Chinese car market.